The Philippines is known for its overseas workers, but is now gaining a reputation for a more worrying trend, drug couriers. Some 500 Filipinos are in prisons across the world on drug-related charges, 85 of them on death row. I'm Fauzia Ibrahim. On this edition of 101 East, we ask if the Filipino government is doing its part in the global war against drugs. Three different drugs and about seven minutes to take effect. This kind of crime is poverty related. I just carry a bag from Malaysia to China and they give me $1,000. Death by lethal injection is often used for prisoners convicted of drug charges. It kills the person by first putting them to sleep, then stopping the breathing, and then stopping the heart. They are probably more desperate, you know, if you're a single mother, no job, and these people behind these syndicates are getting more creative and, and luring in these vulnerable women. We might be the next Colombia of the Pacific. Close to 10 million overseas workers leave the Philippines every year to work abroad. Their remittances bring back $19 billion annually, making up about 10% of the country's total GDP. Most start their journey here at Manila Airport, heading to over 200 countries around the world. And some take with them more than just clothes. The day before Christmas 2008, Sally Ordinaria Villanueva flew from Manila to Xiamen in southern China. She was caught with more than four kilograms of heroin hidden inside her bag. Her mother Edith says Sally was an innocent victim. There will be those who believe and those who don't believe. But for me, she's my daughter. And I believe that she did not know what happened. Imagine there are billions and billions of people in the world. Why is it that my daughter ended up on death row? Sorry, Ma, I don't know how to explain what I really happened. Edith says a woman who befriended Sally and worked at a travel agency gave her the bag to take to China. The woman has since been charged with human trafficking and taken into custody by authorities. This woman eventually told me the truth. She admitted to me that Sally didn't know anything, that if Sally had known, she would not have carried the drugs. But only one thing, I'm sure you know me from the start, because I'm your daughter. Right, we are poor, but we know what is right and what is wrong. Last month, another Filipino overseas worker was caught carrying drugs. 42-year-old Marita Reyes had returned from Pakistan with 11 capsules of heroin inside her body. She is currently awaiting trial at the Manila City Jail. Her case may take years to process, but she is perhaps one of the lucky ones. She was caught inside the Philippines and is subject to laws more lenient than in other countries. We visited the detention center where Marita is held. Her warden says her story is not unusual. 75% of the total population are facing drug-related cases. Would you say a lot of the women come here because of poverty? That's one factor, ma'am, because um, uh, survival of the family is the reason why some of these women resorted to uh, selling just to survive their families. And from your discussions with the women inside, is there a lack of education or a lack of awareness about the problems of, of drugs, drug trafficking, being a drug mule? Are they aware? Um, I think that's only one factor, ma'am, because uh, we have uh, residents here who are uh, high school graduates. We have residents here who are in their college level when they committed drug-related offense. And we have residents here who are college graduates who are facing the same problem. So it's no excuse then? It's no excuse, I don't think so. Statistics show that Filipino women are being deliberately targeted by international crime syndicates to become drug mules. 63% of Filipino drug couriers caught in recent years are female. 
Senator Pia Cayetano has been calling for a government investigation into the issue. It is very serious. I don't think that this is being overplayed. I do not believe that um, this is just a you know, a sensational case one or two that's being blown out of proportion. No. Why, why is it serious? Well, first of all, we're talking about the lives of many people. And, you know, w when I'm not saying the life of a woman is more important than the life of a man, but there's a big chance that that woman is the sole breadwinner of her family. There's a big chance that she is a mother and will leave children motherless. While some people argue women are vulnerable because of poverty, others say there's no excuse for drug trafficking. The choice is really something that they have to think about very carefully. So the issue is, again, free will. To carry or not to carry in exchange of you know, $2,000 to $5,000. Don't ever be tempted because the end game would be if you are caught, then it would be very hard for the authorities in this country to help you out. Anti-drug campaigner Dante Jimenez says it's a waste of the government's time to campaign against other countries' drug laws. I, I believe we have to respect the laws of other countries. It's, uh, I'm sorry to say this to the families, but uh, sometimes uh, the money is being wasted because of, and the time especially is being wasted because of uh, the conviction that had been already rendered by the, the other, other country's court. This is the lethal injection center in Manila. It was actually only used seven times before the death penalty was abolished here in 2006. But many countries like the United States and China still use this method. Under Chinese law, the death sentence can be given for carrying drugs weighing just 50 grams. It's a harsh punishment for the families left behind. I was able to send three letters last August from me and her two children. Her elders told her, Mama, don't worry about us. We're studying well. We're okay. She promised to study law so she could fight for her mother. I cried when I read that letter. Sally was one of five children. Her youngest brother Jason is 24. He doesn't want to be identified. When we were in Macau and I didn't have work, she came to my house every Sunday to cook for me. And we would walk to the park and eat there. I always remember those times. Jason never believed his sister was guilty. His journey to prove her innocence cost him his job and could have cost him his life. He approached the people he believed were responsible for putting the drugs into Sally's luggage and quickly became part of their world. I went to see the person who sent my sister to China. I pretended to be looking for a job. I said I needed money. And she gave me a telephone number. She said I should call that person who works with her. So I tested the person and I got a reply. The drug syndicate offered him $4,000 to take drugs to China. He swallowed 34 pellets of heroin. The capsules I swallowed looked like shotgun bullets, but they were colored yellow. The first five capsules I swallowed were okay in my throat, but the more I swallowed, the more painful it got. But what the crime syndicate didn't know was that Jason then approached the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency known as PDEA. As an undercover drug mule, he helped gather enough evidence to send several people from the syndicate to jail. But he says it came at a cost. There are death threats. The syndicates that I have crossed, sometimes they watch out for me in the street. I've told the Fidea about it, but they have done nothing. The syndicates have also been texting threats to me, so I'm unable to move freely. I'm proud of him because what he does is helpful. He's really courageous. I'm afraid for him. 
But there's nothing I can do. This is what he wants to do, so I cannot stop him. Sometimes he just won't tell me things. I know that on Facebook he gets many texts. But despite all this, Jason says he would do it again. All I can say to that is that I just really love my sister because she was the one who took care of me. That's why I did this. And also for the other Filipinos in China. I don't think that's heroic. Recruiting drug mules is one method the Filipino authorities are using to fight the battle against the country's $84 billion drug trade. In the international airports, we have pinpointed uh, all the airports and even domestic uh, airports in here. In fact, there are former drug couriers or, who are coordinating with us and have provided us information on uh, what is happening in Southeast Asia. And, and some of them have given us names. The government has also launched the anti-drug courier program. The program involves the Department of Foreign Affairs, along with 11 government agencies, including crime-fighting units like Today and the National Bureau of Investigation, the NBI. The team has a possible lead to an international drug syndicate. They've heard of a gang recruiting drug mules. While they prepare for the raid, we meet one of the newest members of their team. Flora, as she prefers to be known, was a drug mule for two years. An unemployed college graduate with three children, she said she needed the money. Then she got arrested and is now helping authorities catch bigger targets. I'm helping NBI how to trace uh, the route of the, the, the carrier and also where and from and also how to, to, to know all the person who are as an agent or Filipino or also uh, some nationality. So you've become an informer, informer for the, yeah. for the NBI? Yes. Okay. She told us how she learned to escape detection from sniffer dogs. The heroin is placed inside a brown envelope. The envelope is wrapped in plastic and tape and then flattened. Then we line it with foil, then carbon paper, then another layer of tapes and carbon paper again. Then we spray paint the liver or perfume so the dogs come smell the drugs. Is there a feeling that's, that it's easier for the women to get through? the customs? Yes. Okay. That's suspicious. But why are the women doing this? Because of money, I think. Some of the Filipina had boyfriends, and since they love their boyfriends, they want to work with them. There are also Filipinas who need to do the work because their parents were sick, or they needed the money to pay for their children's schooling. And there are those who are helping their siblings to study. These are the reasons that Filipino do the jobs, especially those women who can't ignore the needs of their children. We believe it is more, it's dominated by women, is because when they go through the immigration process, um, studies show that, that the immigration officers and law enforcers tend to be more lenient with women, and they've gone to the extent of using pregnant women. Um, so that's really, you know, that's very shocking. As well as better policing, Senator Cayetano believes more awareness campaigns are needed. Overseas briefings for foreign workers have long been in place, but in recent months, authorities have intensified the module on anti-drug trafficking. Don't bring in or sell drugs. This class now includes a section on what to do if approached by a drug syndicate. Rose knows what this experience is like. When she was in Macau looking for work as a domestic helper, she was offered $4,000 to become a drug mule. An incision is made in the skin, usually a part that's not often seen. You can then just wear a jacket when you're traveling. And since it's usually cold there, authorities would not even think about checking your body. They really don't make checks anyway. Rose turned the offer down and has little sympathy for Filipinos caught trafficking drugs. 
Hindi po ako naniwalang hindi nila alam. I don't believe that they don't know. They do know. The syndicate already trained them here in Manila. I'm not saying that the government should just forget about them. But there are many Filipinos on death row who need the government's help more than them. Like those who were raped and killed their employer to defend themselves. Those are the people they should help. And people like me who are forced to work under difficult circumstances. The NBI are on the move. They've been investigating a possible link between the travel agency involved in Sally Villanueva's case and an international drug syndicate. The suspects live in a residential suburb south of Manila. The team received a tip-off that the gang were recruiting drug couriers. The men were offering couriers between three to five thousand dollars to carry drugs. As detectives make four arrests, another NBI member searches the men's computers. The men had been buying online air tickets using stolen credit cards from bank accounts in the United States, Germany, and Italy. Each arrest brings the NBI closer to those at the top of the drug syndicates. But for Sally and the other two Filipinos on death row, it's too late. Despite appeals by the Filipino government, all three were executed on the 30th of March. They were the first Filipinos to be executed in China for drug trafficking. I always cry when I see her picture in the newspaper, which I read over and over again. I look at her face. I didn't expect that this would happen to her. It's very painful and difficult for me. I always read her letters and they make me cry. I ask the Lord not to abandon my daughter, to take care of her. That report by Kathy Hearn, with the number of drug mules being recruited from the Philippines on the rise, more are getting caught. Vice President Jejomar Binay flew to Beijing in February to plead clemency for Sally Villanueva and two other Filipinos sentenced to be executed for drug trafficking. We speak to Vice President Jejomar on the Philippines' war on drugs. Mr. Vice President, thank you very much for speaking with us today. Uh, you went to China earlier this year to plead clemency for the three Filipinos. Let me ask you, sir, is drug smuggling a punishable offence here in the Philippines? Yes, uh, it's a capital offence. The only difference between, for example, in China, when you talk of capital offense, I suppose it's a death penalty. But uh, in the Philippines, when we say capital offense, it's life imprisonment because uh, we have done away with the uh, death penalty. Then why shouldn't the Filipinos who commit crimes or smuggle drugs into other countries be subjected to their punishment? Uh, this is a case where, uh, you know, we feel that the cases uh, involved would be uh, uh, it could be the subject of leniency, you know, and... Uh, In what way, leniency? Uh, These are uh, three we, we, Filipinos we, who smuggle drugs into another country. Right, You would not stand for anyone smuggling drugs into your country. Surely China would be able to subject these three Filipinos to their own laws and punishment. Well, leniency in the sense that uh, they are not members of a syndicate. They were only mere couriers. They were only mules uh, for them. But they had a choice to be couriers. Right, but the penalty is not as serious as that. Uh, there's, you know, what they say, the principal, the, comp the accomplice, and then the accessory. And the, the penalties would vary. Surely these people would have known what the penalties are. Uh, not in the case of uh, probably two out of the three. But drug smuggling is a crime. True, but they were never knew that they were carrying drugs. They never knew that they were carrying drugs. That's true. This you have on record for a fact? Yes, that's a part of their defense. Right. Do you think that you are perhaps... Especially of the case of Sally Villanueva. Uh, in fact, um, we have filed a case against uh, the, uh, the recruiter. Uh, after due investigation, a case has been filed against this recruiter. Don't you think, though, that you perhaps may be setting a precedence for other Filipinos who may be considering going into drug smuggling as well? Because after all, their government, if they get caught, their government will come to their rescue. 
why not let them be the deterrents well, for Alan, other potential Filipino drug smugglers? Uh, the fact that they've been sentenced would be would serve already as a deterrent. But, uh, you know, everything will have to be taken on a case-to-case -case basis. What we did will not be appreciated. So you're saying that the fact that you flew to China to plead for clemency is not a precedence. You no, will not be doing this in the future? It, it all depends upon the case. That's why I told you it's on a case-to-case -case basis uh, where we will be appealing. Well, what cases then would you be appealing and what cases would you not be appealing? Oh, well, we will be speculating. Let me just, uh, there will be several cases where we would say we will consider this, we won't consider that. So uh, we will have conditions already. Why then these three special cases? Because what is it about these three special cases? In the first place, this will be an instance for two Filipinas. Uh, the dignity of a Filipino here is given much, given much premium. Uh, we cannot imagine uh, two Filipinas uh, being executed. Because they're Filipinas? No, not only that, uh, because, uh, you know, as I told you, our capital offense here is limited to life imprisonment. What about other Filipinos who may be on death row around the world? There are 85 of them around the world on death row, will you be pleading for clemency for all of them? Uh, uh, it all depends on the law of uh, the prevailing in that country. You know. How do you think the Philippines can stop these drug couriers? After all, the numbers are going up year by year. Uh, we, we are fully aware of this particular problem, and that's the reason why, uh, you know, the issue of uh, these couriers should not be taken uh, isolatedly. In other words, uh, we consider it a part of human trafficking and uh, a part of illegal recruitment. Most of these incidents happen not under the present administration. And uh, we are fully aware of our responsibility under the uh, uh, Anti-Human Trafficking Act. Uh, within a period of three months, uh, we have done a, a lot of arrests and preemptions. And, um, um, there are more, uh, more operations going on. Uh, what has been done was a proper coordination of agencies within the country and then uh, coordination with other countries. This now is multi-country efforts already. Why do you think the Philippines is being targeted by drug syndicates for a re as a recruitment center? Uh, this one is uh, it's not a question of destination. It's only passing through. It's passing through. It comes from other places and then pass through, then going to China. Why the Philippines? Well, uh, uh, basically, they are able to convince Filipinos to be involved in this particular unfortunate incident. Would be firstly because of poverty. And but do you think poverty is a good excuse, though, to go into drug smuggling? Do you think that's a good reason? That's a good reason in the Philippines. How uh, so? Surely, object, if everyone object, object in the Philippines knows that drug smuggling is a punishable offense in this country, they must know then that smuggling any drugs outside of this country to another country is also a punishable offense. That's true. But here in the Philippines, when we say you're poor, very poor, you hardly would be able to have a three dishes a day. And there are a lot of members in the family involved. That is object poverty. And so, uh, there's a saying in Filipino, if I have to translate it in English, would say, you would do anything for the purpose of being able to produce your daily needs. That is abject poverty. Do you think perhaps the death penalty should be reintroduced into the Philippines to, in order to stop the drug couriers? Uh, there's an attempt, but I think uh, not at the moment. Uh, the prevailing sentiment here is uh, no more death penalty. Do you think the death penalty perhaps could be a deterrence? No, because uh, uh, there is no um, a total study which would show that when there is death penalty, it would serve as a deterrent. Mr. Vice President, thank you very much for speaking with thank us. Thank you very much. That's all the time we have for this edition of 101 East. You can always follow the program through our website, podcast and Facebook. From all the team here in Manila, Philippines, thanks for watching.